This, this is the new iPad Air 2. It's unbelievably gorgeous, and look how thin it is. Can you even see it? <laughs> Eight years. Come this autumn, that's how long Apple will have been providing software support for this, the iPad Air 2, making it the longest supported iOS device ever. This year's release of iOS 16 will finally see support for this model end. But does that mean it's time to chuck your iPad Air 2 in the bin, or will it remain useful now and in years to come? Let's find out. Hey, it's Patrick, and this old man is my iPad Air 2. Originally released way back in 2014, in more recent years it's become the most budget-friendly way to get your foot in the door of the Apple music-making ecosystem. Now, I didn't grab this model when it was released. In fact, I picked up this iPad Air 2 for around £120 back when Apple first released the iPad OS 13 public beta to use as a guinea pig of sorts. It's the base 16 gigabyte model. Yeah, I know, we'll talk about that later. With Wi-Fi and cellular, and as you can see, it's certainly seen its fair share of action over the years. What surprised me most back then was how snappy and responsive it still was, and that mostly remains true today. Obviously, you need to manage your expectations. It's not as speedy as something like an iPad Pro or even a base iPad. But for things like web browsing, note taking, social media, watching videos, and yes, even light music production, the iPad Air 2 definitely holds its own. It supports split view, it has touch ID, it has a headphone jack, remember those, and overall it provides a fairly decent experience. Circling back to music production then, what exactly is this eight-year-old iPad capable of? I'll go ahead and open a new GarageBand project, and you can see that despite taking some time to get going, GarageBand loads up to the sound browser without any issues. I'll go ahead and load up the default piano sound. Again, it does take a little bit longer, but gets there in the end. What's interesting is that when playing the touch piano, there are no issues, no lag, no stutter, no problems at all. I'll jump out and load up Alchemy Next, which definitely has some more processor intensive sounds. What's surprising here is that again, there is no stuttering, no chug to speak of, even when selecting different patches in real time, or moving between different sounds within a patch in real time as well. So far so good, that's all really quite impressive, and the story is the same with other touch instruments as well. Let's head to the drummer next and see if we can do any damage there. We'll just stick with good old Kyle, and it's interesting how well the iPad Air 2 handles real-time pattern changes. It's just silky smooth. I'm genuinely quite surprised at this point. Pattern changes are snappy, edits work in real-time without any hint of stutter, and there's not really any evidence that the iPad has been taxed at all, really. Next, let's test out a few live loop grids and see how the machine fares playing back multiple loops on multiple tracks at the same time. 
Okay, well, it does take significantly longer to load a live loop grid than it does on newer iPads. Once they're ready to go, the iPad Air 2 doesn't really have any issues playing back multiple MIDI and audio loops at the same time. Or switching between different live loop columns at that. If I then hit record and record all of these tracks into the tracks view, again, there's not even a snifter of any slowdown, no chug. Genuinely impressive stuff. So that's GarageBand, which remember is optimised to work really well with Apple devices. How does the iPad Air 2 fare with non-Apple made programs? I'll load up a new session in AUM. What's interesting about AUM is the DSP display in the top right of the screen. This essentially tells you how much your processor is being pushed. If it hits 100%, you know that you've hit the ceiling of what the machine is capable of based on what you have loaded up at that time. I'll load up one instance of Bliss Alpha, one of my favourite synths, and set a pattern going. And then I'll add an effect on to that synth. In this case, audio kits excellent and free verb reverb. With that, you can see that it's pushed the DSP percentage up a fair bit, but we haven't quite reached the ceiling yet. So I'll load up another instance of Bliss Alpha and stick a bass line in there. And you can see with that, we have hit that ceiling, that 100% DSP a couple of times, which does cause a bit of crackling and clipping. So you can see that the two instances of Bliss Alpha and two instances of the Audio Kit Verb added onto them is enough to push the iPad Air 2 to the point where it can't really cope with any more. Surprisingly, the iPad Air 2 is still kind of viable in 2022. Yes, it didn't take much to push it over the edge when working in AUM, but in GarageBand, it seemed to cope pretty well with whatever I threw at it. Now, it's not going to give other models a run for their money in terms of sheer power, but if you want a really cheap device to use as a musical sketch pad or as a replacement for a practice amp, as a guitarist for example, then I think the iPad Air 2 does the job admirably. For anything more than that, if you plan to do some serious music making, I would probably recommend looking elsewhere. You could grab yourself a base iPad from 2018 or even the previous model for not much more than you'd find an iPad Air 2. And the jump in performance you would get from a machine like that would kind of put the iPad Air 2 to shame really. That said, if you do decide to pick up an iPad Air 2, don't get the base 16 gigabyte storage option. That's the one I have here and there's barely enough space on it to install the current version of iPadOS, let alone any extra apps. Seriously, how, how did we used to live like this? So that's the iPad Air 2. I'm incredibly surprised with just how capable this wee iPad is. And it's easy to understand why Apple have kept it around and updated for so long. 
obsolete or not, I don't think I'll be getting rid of mine anytime soon. Let me know your thoughts on the iPad Air 2 in the comments down below. And if you want to drop me a like while you're there, I'd really appreciate it. Next up, watch this video next, where I'll try to convince you that the best synth on iOS is 100% free.